of the first Data 500 driver of the number 22, Shell Pennzoil <laughs> Ford for Team Penske. And that is Joey Logano, the first driver to lock up a spot in the championship four at Homestead Miami Speedway. Um, maybe just open it up with uh, a few comments about uh, running for another championship. Yes, uh, huge um, to, to be in that championship four again. Uh, this will be our third uh, time we've been in, the, in there. So um, we hope this time is the time that we finally get the big trophy at the end. But, um, you know, obviously today is an uh, amazing race car, um, you know, a car that we were able to drive to the front. Uh, but probably even more uh, spectacular was the pit crew. <laughs> uh, they were on their game today, just uh, laying down great stops every time, gaining spots. And, um, the, you know, when you're out front uh, here at Martinsville, you're able to, uh, you know, clean air. It means a lot, but it means a lot for different reasons than it would at, at a Miami or a Phoenix or whatever it is. And I think when you're out front, you're able to control your own pace and uh, keep a lot of air to your to your brakes and, and keep your car cool. And, and it pays off on the long run if you get yourself mired back in the pack and you're fifth, sixth or further back, you're stacked up on other cars and your car's getting hot. You're having to race things harder than you want to. And, uh, before you know it, you pay the penalty on the long run. So the, the, um, pit stops were really, I think the, the game changing moment today for us to keep us out front. And, uh, and then there at the end, just got tight. Um, yeah, we made some adjustments to try to fire off better there and, uh, it did not work. <laughs> um, but we were able to, uh, hold them off and, and um, well, almost hold them off and then uh, be able to, to make the move there at the end to, to get the win. All right, thank you, Joey. Uh, if you have a <laughs> question, raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. Let's start with uh, Dustin and then we'll get to everybody. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, I'm sure you've heard it, Martin Tricks called it a cheap shot, a cheap win. Your reaction doesn't even matter that he's upset with you. No, of course it matters to me. Um, you know, I I think you know as as a race car driver, uh, you know, you, you think about a lot of things. But um, you know, my goal was not to wreck them uh, in any way. Uh, my goal is to win the race, but I don't want to win by by dumping somebody. I want to win by you know making a, a move. And um, you know, as the the classic bump and run, that's that is the move that our sport in Martinsville in particular was built on. Um, you know, and, and I feel like I owe it to my race team to do everything I can and um, to, to be able to win a race um, and get ourselves to, for having another shot at a championship. That's my job. They did their job today, and I had to do mine. And, uh, you know, like I said, it, it wasn't a, a move that I sent them three lanes up the racetrack. I was able to just get underneath them, and then we bumped and banged across the line. Um, you know, that's the way that, that uh, I wanted to do it, uh, to be able to, to get a win. I didn't. You know, like I said, I wasn't going to spin them out. Didn't want to crash them. Didn't want to do anything like that. But uh, I know how big of a deal it is to win um, any race. But when you get to Martinsville, this is probably the second most important race to win all year if you're still in the, the playoffs and to get yourself to Miami. And now there's just one more. So uh, we go focus hard on Miami right now. <coughs> and, and Joe, I want to be careful because I don't want to make sure make, compare these situations too much, but. In your situation a few years ago with Matt, when you had that race at Kansas, you didn't go talk to him. I think you talked about, and Todd talked about, maybe that was a mistake at that point, not trying to reach out and communicate. Is there even any reason to want to talk to Martin at this point or some point before Homestead because he's given the impression that, you know, he's got a memory and, and what's been done to him will be done to you? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, Obviously, we're, we'll talk someday. Uh, when I don't know yet, just give me a minute. Here, <laughs> I just just got here. I can't give you all the answers yet. Give me a chance, but um, you know, I'm sure we will talk about it. And, and uh, it's probably smart that we all kind of cool off first. But um, you know, I, I think in, in general, uh, you know, this this move here is is a very different move, and was able to, uh, like I said, he, he we did, we didn't crash. You know, it, it was we've seen that move here how many times? I don't know, but quite a bit over the last, what, 70 years or so here. That's, that's what this racetrack's built on. And, um, you know, I, I would be expecting the same thing if the roles were reversed. I would be frustrated if I was him also. You know, is it, you're, you're right there at it. I, I get it. It's racing. You know, it, it's hard. It's not, uh, you know, not everyone's happy about it. And there's going to be people that love it. And there's going to be people that don't. And um, that's up to them to decide. But uh you know I, I know what i had to do to uh to get my team uh in into to the championship four and, and ultimately win the race today what about bob pocker cspn uh, 
Martin said that he wouldn't have done that move to, to you. And, and I'm curious in the sense of whether it was a cheap shot or not a cheap shot, how, when you have the trophy in a championship, can you, is it, are you able as a driver to say, do something that maybe you're not the most proud of to win a championship? I mean, is that, is that okay? You know, I think it, it's how, uh, what it is. Every scenario is different, right? And in this situation, like I said, if I spun them out, I'd feel pretty bad right now. I'd say, yeah, I did not mean to do that, and that was not the goal. Um, that, that's a different story, um, you know, and I think I'd be feeling a lot different right now. Um, you know, the fact that, you know, he's still finished in the top three. Uh, you know, we had a hard race. We raced the heck out of each other. Uh, you know, he bumped me a couple times when he was trying to get by me. I get it. Don't blame him. Um, it, it's racing. I, I'm not putting fault on anyone or, or if anyone would do anything different. Um, you know, every, every driver has to have their opinion. Um, and we're all up and everyone in this room will have their own opinion. And that's okay. Um, you know, it's up to you guys to decide what you want. But uh, the facts are it's, it's, it's over now. And, and now it's time to move on. Over here. Peter Strada with TSJ Sports. Joey, this is your 20th career win in the Cup Series. When compared against the Daytona 500, which one is bigger, given the playoff format? <laughs> it's hard to uh, say that is anything's bigger than a Daytona 500, but um, to me, this is definitely one of the maybe a top three or four win uh, in my career. And uh, I guess if we win Miami, that would be bigger than Daytona 500 <laughs> at this point, <laughs> that, that we have a shot to win a championship there. So, um, but you know, Martinsville's always been a special place is, is on the top of my list to get a win. Um, cause we've been so close so many times, let so many laps got sat up here with a lot of poles, but never, uh, was able to finish a deal off and, um, just a, a great feeling to finally, finally get that done, um, and get that grandfather clock. So, um, like I said, I'm proud of my race team. I'm proud of, uh, the car they brought today and the way the whole team executed to, to ultimately get here. I think that's the, to me. Uh, a big story and, and, and um, that, that I'm going to bring back to our race shop and, uh, and be proud of that. So big momentum builder. We'll think about uh, Miami for the next two races. Obviously, that's, that's the biggest advantage, but we're also not going to lay down these next two races either. There's still two races to win. There's momentum to keep uh, up right now and, and uh, make sure we get ourselves ready. Mike Massey with FrenchStretch.com. Um, before Truex got to you, you had to hold off your teammate who was hounding you for several laps. <laughs> were you worried at all that Brad was going to dump you or anything and uh is there like a code between you guys for how to race each other when it comes down to the last 10 laps well, I, obviously he wanted to win um he showed that and and i wanted to win <laughs> obviously the win to me meant a lot more um and obviously he wants to um you know prove that he was he's a championship car as well um after everything that's happened in the last round and, and i get that uh you know we were he was faster than me at the moment, and uh, and then we were able to kind of fight that that battle and, and, and stay ahead. And then uh, and then at that point, I was hoping he'd just race the 78 as hard as possible to 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 create some gap because um, I saw how fast the, the 78 was taking off there and, and running us down. So um, you know we did what we can do there to, to try to uh, you know fight there. But I, I get it. Uh, he's he's um, you know out here trying to win too. It's it's a race. It's not just eight cars going for a win. There's there's still 40 of them out there. Uh, Jerry, Jacob, Ellen, and check out in the press box. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires.net and Performance Racing Network. With this win, you're locked in. As you, but how much pressure is that off your shoulders, knowing that the next two races, you can work on whatever you need to for Homestead? It, it doesn't. I mean, I guess it, re, it relieves some pressure for the next two weeks. Yes, the, the pressure's off, um, at least for those races. But like I said, there's still a trophy there, and I want to win it. That doesn't that doesn't change, and I'm pretty sure my whole race team thinks the same way as, as I do. Is if there's a trophy, we we'll want to be taking it home at the end of the day. Um, but the the must win feeling that's gone. But there's it, in a couple of weeks, it's it's back in our mind again uh, when we get to Miami, and, and that's a must win race. And also, you mentioned trophies. You've got one of the coolest ones in the sport off to your right. How neat is that for you to bring that home? And where will it be? And uh, is it, will it keep Little Man up? Well, it's, uh, when we were able to win here a few years back with the truck race, um, driving Brad's car or truck, I guess I should say, um, they, I got a clock and it's still at the house. It rings every single night. <laughs> it keeps going and it doesn't wake him up. So that's, that's good. Um, but I was just, you know, one of the most iconic trophies in our sport, um, mainly because it's, it's so unique and it's been around for so long. 
Um, and, you know, everyone talks about coming here and, and winning the clock. You know, I don't know how many times I hear TikTok before the race. Everyone, everyone wants that clock and knows what it means uh, to win here at Martinsville. It's a historic racetrack. Um, you know, it's been here for so long and, and so many great races have been on this racetrack and great stories. And, um, and it's all for this grandfather clock. So it's neat to be able to put that in the truck and bring it home. Over to Jacob. Jacob Seelman, Speed Sport. Joey, off to your right back here. Uh, oh, there you are. And hey. Sir Roger was in here earlier and asked him if uh, if he felt like this was a statement victory, and he kind of downplayed it, saying that between you and Brad and even, even Blaney, that as an organization, it had been a really good year for Team Penske as a whole. But as a driver, do you feel like in, in terms of the championship, this is a statement win for you, knowing how good the SHR and the JGR cars have been? Yeah, we, we've really picked it up here the last few weeks and uh, super proud of, of our race team and, and race shop uh, to be able to do that. Um, you, know, you look at the last 15 races for us, has been pretty good. We've been consistent. We've been leading laps. We've been uh, scoring stage points. Um, which shows that there's speed in the car. Um, and anytime you lead a lot of laps, you know the wind's right around the corner. Um, you know, so we're getting back to that championship form. And I think today we proved that we're back there. Um, it, it's taken a while um, to kind of recover for, for us over the last couple of years. It's been, uh, you know, a lot of struggling and a lot of different things going on. And, um, you know, I think we've, we've fought hard. We've stuck together and we've uh, been able to, um, you know, today come out on top. So, uh this will all be, like I said, this will all be history here in a couple of weeks and, and won't mean anything if we don't win the championship. Uh, Ellen, and then we'll check up in the press box. I'm Bob. Ellen Hara, USA Today. Um, when Denny was in here, he was asked for his perspective of the final couple laps, what he saw riding behind you and Martin. And uh, he said that he didn't think you could win once Truex got inside of you um, and you on the outside and that uh, your only choice was to concede the position um, to get back behind him and then end it how it ended. Uh, do you uh, agree with Hamlin or do you think um, had you stayed side by side, you could have pulled it off? I guess we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I know I couldn't stay out there. I was, I was trying to and, and the way my car was, I had to pretty much park in the center to get it to rotate and, um, and then it would just get cars stacked right up on, on top of me and, and exit the corner with the car right behind me. I had no air on the spoiler. and. Uh, it was really loose, so it was really hard for me to drive away. Um, so moving up the racetrack was faster for me. And at that point, it was kind of move up and then just, you know, be able to try to hold pin cars down on the bottom. Um, that was kind of my only play at the moment. Um, so I, I was doing all I can just to, you know, stay within striking distance. And uh, it was definitely on the defense is all I can do uh, to stay there. And, um, you know, it, was that the plan the whole time? No, the plan was to stay in the lead the whole time. <laughs> it was never to give the spot up. That was the last thing on my mind. Any questions in the press box? We do. Yeah, Chris, and I, Chris and I, catchfence.com. Joey, um, how strong, is there anything that you guys can do to get stronger over these next couple of weeks to prepare yourself to battle with the likes of Harvick and potentially Kyle Busch? And, and how, I mean, how do, you, how do you guys approach Homestead? Um, I'm sure there will definitely be um, ways that we, we can improve. Um, you know, I think right now, <laughs> let me enjoy the moment for a minute, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this, is, this is cool. Uh, but there's definitely going to be um, a lot of things we're going to be talking about in the next few weeks and on, uh, how we prepare and make sure we're as ready as possible. Anything else from the press box? I got one more. Okay. Lee Spencer, RacingBoys.com. To kind of follow up on that, um, Three times, I, I guess this is your third time going down to Homestead. Finished second once, had that really you know, disappointment when that late caution came out and, and uh, kind of turned into a you-know-what show. Um, or, or would you just as soon see these races go clean? Because we saw a lot of things today that maybe could have been had cautions called but didn't. I mean, do you kind of like this new style where it just kind of goes green to the end? I mean... I, I didn't see really I mean, today. It seemed like there's cautions and they were legit and it was good. We're going to Homestead! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Heck yeah! Hell yeah. Hell yeah bro. <laughs> we're going to Homestead. They're pretty excited. <laughs> there's my team. Hell yeah. <laughs> I hope they got a DD to get home. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I need them. I need them a little bit more, a little longer. I don't have no idea what the question was anymore. What did you say, Lee? Sorry, Cherry. Um, it just seems lately we haven't had cautions just oh, cautions, called, it yeah. at the, at, called at the drop of a hat. I mean, it. you know, we, we've seen guys slow. You know, they kind of limp their way back. Saw it last week at Kansas. Um, <coughs> you know, it, are you more in favor of just kind of letting things play out rather than, you know, what we had when we had that drama and, you know, you were in the lead at Homestead and it all kind of went away? Yeah, I think, you know, I think um, the, the races have been legit. And I think that's great. And that's part of the um, great thing about stage racing is it puts in a couple of cautions um, to where you, you can, you know, for, for NASCAR, they can call a legit race, um, whether that's a race that goes long, whether it's a fuel mileage race or, or if there is naturally a caution and you get the, the great racing uh, that you see at the end. Either way, um, you know, the, the race winner is the race winner these days. And, um, you know, they, they get there for a reason and it's whether it's strategy or uh, you know, the, the long haul or a short run car, you know, I think that's cool. Um, and you don't know what's going to happen. That's, that's how it is. I think back in the day, we used to all kind of expect that, that late race caution either way. Um, but now it seems like the race is going to play out naturally, um, on how it works. And we don't know how that will be. Anything else in the press box? Uh, I think we're clear. Okay. We'll come back down here. Behind the camera, uh, John Harvard on the ESPN Albuquerque. Um, I felt like this car was probably the best you ever had. Would you agree? I like. I was looking at the stats, and your car at this race in 2015 in the fall race was also really good. So, just is do you feel like one car was maybe better than the other? Just could you talk about that? I'd say a car was pretty good. Um, I like to think that the uh, um, the one that didn't end so well. <laughs> I think that car may have been a tick better. Um, it, it seemed like I was able to control the race a little bit better that day. Um, but this wasn't a bad one. <laughs> Pretty good car. Come up here, Dustin, for follow-up. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, after going through last year and being so close to 16, what does it mean to get back? What what has that that journey been like to to this moment? Yeah, it's great to. Um, I mean, you think about you know a couple of years ago we finished second in points, and then we we follow that up with missing the playoffs. Uh, who's who would have ever thought that? That's something that I was taking for granted that making the playoffs would have been easy. Um, and to uh, kind of have that that check up, I, it's it's it happens. I think God does that sometimes to to teach you some valuable lessons. And I, I think I learned a lot in those situations um, and become a stronger race car driver and a stronger man since then. And uh, you know now. Um, we've been able to take that and, and recover this year and, and get ourselves to the championship four. And uh, that's a pretty big deal. So um, pretty neat that we've been able to kind of bounce back from, from all that. So it's, it says a lot about our race team and, uh, and um, you know, our personalities and, and that uh, persistence that, that we continue to have. Um, so definitely is a, a great, um, like I said, a great day today to, to, to put ourselves back in that championship for. But like I said, all this doesn't mean anything if we don't win the championship. So we got to really focus in. What was, what was like last year? Well, I mean, I want to be there. Is I still like driving race cars. I, I really like driving a race car for a championship, though. Yes. Um, you know, so, hey, yeah. Um, you know, I. This always comes back to my mind for whatever reason. I, I remember uh, the first uh, chase at the time that, that I made, and Jimmy Johnson said it's 10 weeks of hell. And I told him uh, this year, I said, no, missing the whole thing is 10 weeks of hell. It, not being in it is way worse. Uh, and I don't want to feel that feeling again. Not at all. That is not the, not a fun time. So to be able to um, you know keep our hopes alive in, uh, throughout this, this whole 10 weeks um, is something that – I'm proud of as, as a driver, and uh, and I'm proud of my race team as well. I'm back, Barry. Uh, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcast and WAKG. Um, a few weeks ago in Charlotte, I talked to Roger Penske, and we talked about you guys peaking at the right time. And, of course, he said for these championship run, you all are always bringing your, your, your best stuff, which has been very evident. But I want you to talk about the dynamic of expanding the team uh, with – um, Ryan Blaney, there was an arm's length relationship there when he was with Wood Brothers, but um, how has that uh, actually just strengthened the team? Because it looks like it's been a lot of uh, good results coming out, uh, especially the second half of this year. 
Yeah, there's uh, definitely some growing pains along with that because anytime you add another race team, you think about the personnel, the procedures, how you build a car, you, you got to build more, right? And uh, how you update cars and get them all to the racetrack as quickly as we used to. Um, th there's growing pains that come along with that. Um, I think we, we worked through that in the first part of the year. And, uh, and now, I mean, you look at that 12 car is fast, um, arguably maybe the fastest of the three of us sometimes, a lot of times, um, you know, so it's definitely a great car for us to, to lean on, talk about, you know, um, you know, definitely that, that information that's being shared now really, really is helpful. Um, and I think a lot of that's because, you know, Ryan Blaney, uh, has really, um, you know, matured as a race car driver and really has figured out what he needs to go fast and, mm -hmm. and how to, um, you know, go fast at a lot of different racetracks and, and now, you know, instead when it was, you know, when he was driving the 21, he's a rookie and as expected, it's kind of a one way relationship There's you know, it's kind of, here's what we're doing. And, and you kind of take what he said with a grain of salt now, uh, as he's been so competitive, uh, there's definitely that back and forth. There's definitely, uh, we look at what they're doing a lot. Joey, uh, Pete McColl with AutoRacing1.com over here. Right. Um, as Dustin alluded to earlier, Martin Truex seemed to suggest that payback might be in the offing in sometime in the near future. Is that changed the way you drive with him on the racetrack? Do you, are you going to – does that change your strategy any when you have him in your rearview mirror? Like I said, I didn't crash him. I, I didn't crash him. We, we raced hard. Um, I moved him out of the way. Uh, they're moving four lanes up the racetrack now. I just got enough to get my nose under there. That's what happened. Um, you know, in the heat of the moment, we're all going to say things we regret no matter what. Uh, I'm not saying he regrets it. I don't know. Um, but I know I've said things that in the heat of the moment that I wish I didn't a lot of times. And, um, and, and it's, like I said, it's part of racing and how he wants to handle it from here. It, that's, that's his decision. Um, how he wants to handle that. Uh, but like I said, my focus can't be on that. It has to be on winning a championship. It has to be about Miami right now, um, and there can't be distractions. Any final, final questions for Joey? Oh, Jim up here in the front. <coughs> Jim Hunter, motorsport.com. Um, I was just curious, the last two races, you've led a combined over 400 laps, which is possibly close to or more than – You've led the whole rest of the season. You talked about reaching championship potential. Um, do you feel like you're, you have reached that potential specifically in the last couple of weeks? I think we're showing it. Yeah, I, I do. Um, you know, and we're, and we're there. So, obviously, uh, we've gotten to that point. Um, if you asked me in the beginning of the playoffs, uh, I was kind of, you know, we, we were consistent. We were uh, getting a lot of top tens, but we weren't really a threat to win yet. Um, but I think over the last few few races, maybe five or six races, we've really, um, you know, been able to pick it up and um, show that, you know, we, we can become a threat. And I think today with the way our pit stops were um, and, and the speed and uh, there was no mistakes made all day long on, on anyone's part. And I think that's when you know you're in championship form. Um, you know, I think y you always want all the cars in there, right? You want as much, as many shots that you can get, uh, for, for Roger Penske, for, for everyone that, that works at team Penske to, to get a championship. It affects so many people, so many people's livelihoods, right? Uh, the bonuses that come along with everyone that works at the race shop. There's a lot that goes along with this, with these things, um, that, you know, for us we, at the racetrack, we kind of think about winning in the championship, but it affects people's life. Uh, in a lot of different ways um, when we're a performance-based company like 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 any like most racing companies are um, You know, so you don't ever want to see that opportunity for them go away um, The advantage part is is that we're building, you know one car instead of trying to build three special cars or in some cases four special cars right that are just you know massaged on and trying to get every little bit out of and um, So that that's the advantage I guess um, you know, but I don't think it's the advantage that, that anyone wanted. I think it's up to us to try to find an advantage a lot of times in, in a negative situation like that. But um, we were able to use it to, to our advantage, I guess, a little bit here today. Jerry Jordan kicking the tires on PRN. Um, over the past couple of weeks, probably everybody in here has bought a lottery ticket for Powerball or Mega Millions and thought how cool it would be to win that. But can you let yourself think about how cool it would be to win the championship? Are you a, do you let yourself do that? 
Of course I do. I'm human. <laughs> What's, I, don't, I don't know if my uh, fantasy land is, is very close to reality. A lot of times it's a little different. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the championship is the ultimate goal. That is that is what I've said since I was six years old and I got in a race car. I want to win a NASCAR championship. And um, been close a couple times now. And, uh, and, and I know how much it hurts to lose. So I can only imagine what winning feels like. It must be the polar opposite. That must feel pretty good. <laughs> I like to win. That'd be pretty cool. All right, Joey. Congratulations. Thank you so much for coming in and spending so much time with us. And good luck in Homestead. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a safe trip home.